Welcome everybody to this Zebra and Imprint Enterprises presentation on powering your on-demand enterprise, digital transformation, mobility, innovation. Today we're going to be talking about Zebra Enterprise mobile computers, and I would like to turn it over to Bob Conti to introduce Imprint. Bob, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Brian. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome everyone to our ongoing series of webinars, and thank you for your attention. Uh, my name is Bob Conti, president of Imprint Enterprises, and today I'm very proud to have Amanda Honig from Zebra Technologies to discuss their wearable solutions. Before we move into our discussion, I'd like to introduce Imprint Enterprises. Imprint was founded in 1975, and since 1990, we have been furnishing on-demand label printing systems and AIDC products and services to clients in North America. We are privately held and currently have over 2,000 customers. The companies you see here represent a subset of our customer base. Some of these customers have been with Imprint for the 33 years we've been in the industry. While these companies are household names, Imprint has also been assisting hundreds of small and medium-sized businesses meet their needs. Our approach is to provide the best-in-breed technology to accomplish your goals, keeping your budget in mind. Imprint's product set can be broken down into a few different subsets, first being hardware and software. Imprint has risen to top tier status with Zebra and Siegel Scientific. Our product mix is on-demand label printing systems, rugged and industrial mobile terminals, both handheld and fixed mount scanners, wireless networking infrastructure, and RFID solutions. The next segment is printed consumables or printer media. For 33 years, Imprint has been furnishing label printer media to customers in the Fortune 50 on down to startups. We stock over 750 different sizes of labels nationally, and over 50% of our label revenues are custom sizes or configurations. We also do regulatory labeling such as ULCSA, specialty products such as integrated forms, which serve the direct-to-consumer shipping marketplace, RFID labels and tags, as well as prime labels. Imprint's professional services portfolio has continued to grow over our 33-year history. We began by deploying and servicing on-demand label printing systems and bartender installations, but have grown to offer SOTI's mobile device management platform, wireless site surveys, application development and deployments, mobile device deployments, and our very own remote support services platform, IM2. Now I'd like to segue in today's topic, Zebra's wearable solutions portfolio. Amanda, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Bob. Let's talk first about you know, what's going on out in the market today um, and why should you consider equipping frontline workers with wearables and hands-free technology in the first place? Uh, it's probably not a surprise to anybody that it's a new world out there in full order fulfillment today. Um, E-commerce continues to grow uh, as a result picking and sorting, you know, their full-time jobs, their heavy duty jobs as well. Um, you have high order volumes. So that's causing the need to uh, process more orders. Uh, you have increased order complexity. So rather than shipping, you know, a pallet of goods to one address, you're, you know, shipping items. Uh, item level fulfillment to multiple different addresses out there. Um, and there's this demand for faster delivery times. You know, we want it next day, we want it same day within two hours. Um, so that's really taxing uh, on the labor force um, and is causing people to look at new ways uh, to be able to take on this explosion um, in e commerce and the change in order fulfillment. On top of that, when we look about at picking operations today, uh, they're very labor intensive, um, right? So what we see here, 50% um, of warehouse labor is used in picking operation. And because it's so intensive, you have very high turnover. Um, so that's constantly um, workers leaving the workforce, new uh, workers coming in, Training is uh, costly, especially if you're having to train new people uh, regularly, um, as well as it being uh, highly seasonal. So there's times throughout the year where it becomes even more intense. 
um, and it's very physically taxing. These are tough jobs, you know, especially when you're looking at um, very large warehouses, people are uh, walking far distance, and then they're having to um, pick multiple pro product throughout the day. So um, it's no surprise that it's hard to keep labor um, in such a taxing environment. And this is why um, we're seeing uh, people evaluating new types of technologies to help augment the workforce and make it easier so that, you know, you're not, not only able to uh, fulfill orders faster and more accurately, but able to make the workload easier on associates um, and hopefully retain more um, and kind of stop this churn of workers um, onboarding um, and leaving uh, these picking um, jobs. This brings us kind of into the topic that we're speaking to today on uh, on wearables, because you know as executives are looking at these challenges, right? This rise in e-commerce, the complexities with order fulfillment, the labor challenges. Uh, from a warehouse vision study that Zebra um, hosted, collecting feedback from executive and decision makers across the globe, uh, we saw that 84% of respondents are planning to deploy or upgrade existing wearable computers by 2025 as a way to mitigate all of the you know, challenges and trends that I just shared above. And the reason why they're looking at upgrading um, existing or deploying new wearable technology is because of the benefits that are offered, not just to the business by increasing productivity. You see here up to 30% increase in productivity when you enable a frontline worker to be hands-free, but there's also up to 50% less muscle effort required. So you know, everything I was talking about earlier on just how labor intensive the picking operation is, if you could you know, reduce the muscle effort by 50%, that's really taking a load off of the frontline worker and making it easier for them to pick orders and, and making them want to stay um, at that uh, job, you know, because they're being enabled with technology that's helping them get the work done easier, um, more efficiently, and less taxing on their bodies. So, now that we've you know, kind of seen what's going on in the market that's uh, leading businesses to look at wearable technology and seeing the benefits that we get out of wearables, let's jump in um, and talk through Zebra's wearable portfolio. So you'll see here you know, in the image, uh, a frontline associate wearing the wearable technology. Um, so outside of the percentage, percentages I showed prior on the increase in productivity and the, the percentage of muscle effort that's, that's lessened by using wearable technology, that productivity, how we enable that with wearables is allowing frontline workers to process more orders. They can increase their order accuracy because they're, you know, they have that wearable device right on their arm. So they're able to see what their um, you know, next pick item is and have that information there while their hands are free and allowing them to meet those faster delivery times. So this is how your business can benefit if you are to enable your frontline workers with wearable technology. So with that, I wanna talk through um, you know, the different types of wearable offerings that Zebra has available. Within our portfolio, we have um, two different types of wear, you know, wearable solutions. They're both fit for purpose, meaning these are solutions that are designed to be hands-free and to be dedicated wearable solutions. On the left side, we have um, our fit for purpose two-piece solution. This is a mobile computer, you know, a large screen mobile computer on the wrist where you can do your data entry, you can pick, you know, see your, um, your pick orders. Um, and when you need scanning, you can pair a ring scanner, whether that be a Bluetooth ring scanner or a corded ring scanner. This solution is what we see in use cases where 
you need the maximum productivity. You have very high um, transactions, high user interaction, um, very scan intensive as well, as well as needing uh, a very durable wearable solution, you know, that is going into freezer environments, for example, that has um, requirements for extended um, battery life, you know, and having the ability to use, um, you know, thick gloves if you're going into the freezer and still being able to operate the display and the keyboard. And you need to see a lot of information on that screen. On the right side, we have still a fit for purpose wearable, but this is a one piece solution where the mobile computer has the scanning and data capture in, uh, integrated into the one device. So you don't need a separate ring scanner um, to do the data collection. Everything is housed in that one core um, wearable device that you could have um, with a dedicated scan engine or with a camera and be able to use that to take a photograph or to do very light scanning. Um, and the difference here is with the one piece solution, this is you know um, very specific application. So it's not a device where you would have multiple applications running. Let's say that you're doing trailer load, for example, and an end user is merely scanning all, you know, their entire shift, and they just need to see on their display that they scan the right you know, they have scan the right box and they know what location to put the box in and they can scan and get a verification on what they scanned. It's so in these use cases where a user is only needs to see that minimal information, they're not interacting with the screen all of the time. Um, this is a better solution if that large screen real estate isn't needed um, because you know, now you're saving cost um, because you're not having a separate ring scanner and its accessories plus a dedicated large screen wearable. Everything's in that one unit. It all has its one accessories. Um, it's highly ergonomic um, and allows you to kind of right size a device for the specific use case. So now that you know the two different types, fit for purpose two piece and fit for purpose one piece, we can go in and learn about each of these um, devices specifically so you can have a better understanding um, and see which is right for your use case. So within the portfolio, we have on that two-piece solution, the WT6300. Um, this is that full mobile computer, the large screen uh, that you can also add a keyboard to if you need physical uh, keys. And this solution could be mounted on the wrist or the hip and could pair to uh, one of our scanners. We have the RS5100. Uh, this is a standard range scan engine um, that is uh, lightweight, Bluetooth or corded, um, and can be worn in uh, many different mounting options. We're going to talk through that as we go through the presentation. The RS6100 is um, Similar form factor to the 51, where it differs is that we have a high performance scan engine that can scan at very far distance and short range, as well as can operate in um, freezer environments. And then the WS50 is that fit for purpose one piece solution. So I'll go through each of these different devices um, to give you a better feel um, for the capabilities and see how this fits um, the environment that you're working in. The WT6300, as I said before, this is a, a 4.7 inch display wearable mobile computer that you could mount on the wrist or the hip. You have it available with a keypad or without. Um, you know, many people use the keypad because users are um, wearing gloves and it's easier to be able to um, key in on the keypad for them uh, versus using just the screen real estate. Uh, but again, that's optional. It snaps right into the WT. Um, the display, again, is optimized for glove use. So if you do have freezer use cases, users are able to wear those gloves and be able to interact with the display. It is a rugged device. 
Um, it isn't likely that it would be dropped often because you're wearing it, but there is, you know, higher instance of like impact as you're walking, you know, bumping into things. So we have tested um, and built these to survive those uh, environments. The ergonomics are um, are great for the wearable use case. You know, when it comes to the wearable technology, you know, many cases it's overcoming um, end user hesitation. You know, me as the frontline worker, now I'm being asked to wear technology on my body to get my job done. Um, so ergonomics actually plays a very key role in the adoption of the wearable device and um, the happiness of the end user. So we've put a lot of effort into making these very comfortable to wear, um, making it so that the devices can also be disinfected and clean to prevent the spread of germs. Um, all of that, you know, we, we've put into um, these wearable devices so that the reception from the frontline workers is positive uh, when they're being asked to actually now wear the technology. Um, these are Android devices. We have made it very cost effective to migrate from Windows CE to Android um, on the all of the Zebra Android computers. We've got a lot of different feature sets um, available, our mobility DNA tool set to really boost the productivity and make these devices e easy to manage and very um, secure in the deployment. So I did talk a little bit already about the ergonomics. This is giving you a little more detail on how we achieve the great ergonomics on the device. It is lightweight, um, so just over nine ounces on the arm. It's designed for wearability. So, you know, the device itself has a low center of gravity and that does cut the muscle effort. It minimizes fatigue, um, which we know is important because these picking use cases, they are um, taxing on the body. So the more that we can do on the wearable devices to make them comfortable, uh, the better. Um, and it is a perfect fit. You know, the mount itself is adjustable. Um, you can uh, easily um, tighten or loosen the mount itself to make it more comfortable. And we'll see um, exactly the, how we do that in the next slide. So this is the wrist mount. You can see there on the bottom, we have the BOA knob, um, and that allows you to tighten and loosen the mount onto the wrist um, and lock it so that it stays in place, but you can very easily pop it out and loosen and take the, um, the mount off. You know, we've seen uh, in the past, we had uh, in prior generations Velcro straps, and we've learned, you know, from those rollouts that um, it's more comfortable having this mount that I'm showing here and not having the, the Velcro, right, that used to need to be replaced often. Like with this, you can easily clean the mount itself so you're not collecting any sweat or dirt or grime. Um, and the pad itself, there's comfort pad on here that you can remove and buy extras of so that users have their own, you know, unique mount and they're not sharing the same pad as they are with other uh, workers within um, the operation. So it's not only is it a nice, breathable, comfortable material, you can also uh, purchase um, different pads for the individual user so that they have their own and they're not sharing amongst other workers. And the durability. So I did say the chances that these get dropped is not going to be often because these are worn on the wrist. But if they do, we have rated these to a four foot drop. They go through our tumble testing. They're also IP65 sealed and they're built to withstand um, extreme operating temperatures. So all the way down to minus 30 Celsius. So if you're, you have operations in freezers, these devices are going to be able to operate no problem within those environments. Um, and like I've said, these, you know, you might have more instances of impact when the device is on the wrist, but with the Corning Gorilla Glass display, you know, it helps mitigate um, scratching and, and shattering of the displays. And they're also optimized for that glove use, you know, if you have those heavy gloves within those freezer environments. And with, just like with all Zebra devices, we have a very robust accessory ecosystem. Uh, when it comes to the WT, 
we've really tried to uh, make it as um, kind of easy to manage the back room, especially because you're pairing these with ring scanners. So we have, you know, on the cradle side, um, if you want to charge a device with the ring scanner in the same cradle, we have options like that with the two slot, or if you want to charge multiple wearables, uh, WTs in one charger, and then multiple ring scanners in a multi-bay, you have that option as well. Um, options to charge the spare battery in a single slot, options to charge just the battery or 20 batteries in, in a row. We make it, we give you lots of different options, you know, to choose the backroom charging option that works for your use case. And the mounts here is where I was referencing, you know, how you're able to uh, provide like replacement comfort pads, comfort pads to individual associates um, so that they're able to keep their own and have them cleaned and mitigate, you know, the spread of germs, many different um, size of mounts, because we do know people all have different size hands and arms. So uh, we give different options to make sure that you can enable the most comfortable solution on a wearable for your associates. But that two piece fit for purpose wearable solution isn't complete until you add um, your data capture option. So we have two options with the RS5100 and the RS6100 Bluetooth wearable scanners. These are um, high performance wearable scanners, but they're also highly ergonomic. Um, and we provide five different mounting options so that you're able to choose you know, the right option that meets the needs of your users. Um, and they're so versatile, they can be used in many different use cases or verticals out from warehouse and distribution all the way up to retail front of store when you think about like a BOPIS um, picking use case and pairing these two, um, two uh, traditional handhelds as, wear as well as wearable computers. Just like the wearable terminal that goes on the wrist, you want the ring scanner to be as comfortable and lightweight and easy to wear um, so that end users you know, are happy to adopt the wearable technology. And with both the RS51 and RS61, they're tiny and feather light. Um, we tried very hard and, and worked very closely with our human factors team to make sure that these were you know, light on the finger, comfortable, um, and at the same time, high performing uh, ring scanner solutions. Um, so you'll see, you know, with the wearable options, like the, the trigger and mounting options, we've provided many different, you know, ways to find the most comfortable option for the end users within your operation. And because they're Bluetooth ring scanners, they can be paired outside of just uh, the WT63. So if there are use cases with um, a touch computer or a vehicle computer, you know, someone jumping off the forklift and needing to, to scan um, a shelf or pallet, you can take these and Bluetooth connect them to any of our Zebra Bluetooth capable handhelds. Um, and we make the tap and, and pair very easy. These have NFC on them. So you could, you know, simply tap the device to the ring scanner to one of the devices and quickly pair um, that ring scanner to the host mobile computer. Um, and with the support for class one and two, we offer very long range distance. You can see roam up to 300 feet from that host device and still be able to capture the barcode and send that data communication back to the host computer. But if you don't wanna be cordless, um, and don't want a Bluetooth ring scanner, you can add the corded adapter and have this solution corded to the WT63. So it really depends on, you know, what's right for your use case. You know, in some cases, the having the freedom to not have that cord and be able to wear the ring scanner on the opposite hand is beneficial to the end user. They prefer that modality and functionality. Um, however, within some operations, the um, they don't like to have uh, separate 
charging accessories, you know, a, a charger for the WT and a charger for the ring scanner, or there's concern around loss of the ring scanner. You know, somebody, because it's so small, somebody puts it down and then they forget where they put it and it gets lost. Having the corded adapter mitigates that um, situation and helps with loss prevention because it's connected directly to that WT. So there's less chance that it could get lost. Um, but again, like I said, it really depends on what your users prefer and what's better for your operation. And that's why we offer the two different options. So I keep mentioning RS-51 versus RS-61. Um, the key differentiators between the two models is the data capture itself, like the scan range options, and also um, the operating temperature, like the, you know, the environments that they can operate in. So on the RS-5100, you have two different options for this data capture, the 4770, which is our highest performing standard range engine. Um, it has that global shutter sensor and high-end lens, uh, better motion tolerance, and you can see it has that crosshair um, red laser illumination. We also have the 4710. So it's still a high performance standard range engine, but you have um, less you know, aggressiveness. So it won't um, decode as quickly as the 4770 and maybe it doesn't perform as good on the damage or dirty barcodes. But if that's not in your environment, then the 4710 might be a better option. It really depends on the use case and that's why we offer the two. With the RS6100, we've included our SE5500 um, scan engine. And this engine is our most advanced range scanning option. It can scan all the way out to 40 feet, but also you know, it can read a barcode close up that you're holding in your hand. So you know, if you need that versatility of short range and very long range, the RS6100, uh, RS5100, <clears throat> apologies, RS6100 with the SE5500 engine um, is going to give you that performance. Um, it also has a different aiming pattern and um, aiming illum illumination. It's a green laser aimer, which is um, highly visible. It's easier to see um, in different lighting conditions. And that laser aimer makes it easier to know, you know, that you scan the right code, especially at that longer distance. Um, that longer distance, but it's also very quick to switch from the short range to the long. So it's not like you have a, a long waiting period. There's no auto adjustment. It can very quickly scan at the short range and then all the way out to that long range. Um, so that's uh, a key difference you know, in the different models uh, when choosing which ring scanner is right for you. So outside of that advanced scanning, where the RS6100 differs from the 5100 is in uh, the operating temperature. So you'll see there on the side, freezer and cooler operation for cold chain use cases. The RS5100 doesn't have um, rating down to minus 30. So the RS6100 is a great option if there's a need to do that wearable scanning in that freezer environment. Um, but outside of that and the scan range, it shares all of the same um, advantages as the RS-51, small and light. It has the five wearing options. It supports corded and cordless operation, has a removable replaceable battery, um, is, and um, is compatible with all the same triggers, mounts, and batteries as the RS-5100. So these are the five different wearable uh, styles for the RS5100 and RS6100. We give you the most flexibility and the most um, wearable options because we understand that you know, every operation is unique. Every end user has different preference. So depending on the wearable style that you want, you have five here to choose from, from the hand mount to the finger mount um, to the lanyard and the back of hand. And we make the swapping very easy as well. So if you have, you know, one user who wants the back of hand mount, you can easily pop that ring scanner off and pop on uh, the finger mount scanner as well. So it's not like you have to buy, you know, different models. It's really all the same core ring scanner. And then you can easily interchange the different mounting options. So we'll talk a little bit about each one of them. 
The hand mount, as you'll see here, the Enterprise hand mount is kind of like a wraparound um, glove form factor. You'll see there right where the thumb is, is where the actuator, the trigger is to trigger the scan engine, which is you know, very comfortable um, in that position. It gives you a nice snug and secure custom fit. It comes in different sizes. You have small, medium, large, and you have right-handed and left-handed options. Um, you can adjust the scanner angle so that it minimizes the hand movement. You're also able to adjust the scanner position so that you have a good balance. Um, and it's also a better hygiene solution because you can easily take the ring scanner and the plastic mount and trigger, you can pull that off of the enterprise hand mount and then um, wash it. It's a it's a low cost fabric hand wrap. So you could either have it cleaned off or you can you know purchase multiple ones to give each user their own and have a you know a better hygiene um, solution. On the finger mounts, again depending on the the preferred triggering option you have uh, a single trigger option that you would trigger, you know, with your thumb, um, and that trigger can easily rotate so that it can be used either for left-handed or right-handed. Use it with or without gloves. On the double trigger, you don't have to do the rotating of the ring scanner, right? Once you put that on, you have a trigger on each side, so it doesn't matter. You'll put it on your finger, and it will. Um, automatically disable the trigger that's not um, being used and only the one that your thumb is hitting. And with this double trigger, you have an options for haptic feedback, so a vibrate option so that you can, you know, feel. Um, usually when there's an exception, you don't want it to vibrate every time you scan it on a good scan, but it could vibrate, you know, maybe when there's a uh, an error that's been scanned so that it alerts the user in case it's a noisy environment and they don't hear the different beep sound. And again, better hygiene because you could give each associate their own personal trigger um, so they don't have to deal with, you know, cleaning it before they pass it on to, the, to another user. We also have a back of hand mount and a lanyard mount. Um, so on the back of hand, similar concept as that enterprise hand wrap, but this is still, um, a ring scanner, it's still on your ring. It's a um, durable material. So it's uh, it's only the wrist strap piece has fabric. So you, it's easy to fit into small places um, with the back of hand mount um, and um, is a one size fits all. So you don't have to have left-handed, right-handed, small, medium, large. So again, it really depends on the user preference and that's why we offer the multiple options. In some use cases, you might not want to have it worn on the hand at all um, and have it be used on a lanyard. So that's what this option is that we're showing here. You can have a lanyard um, worn around the neck or on the belt with a retractor and use the trigger button there on the back that you can attach in order to scan. So many different mounting options on the, the both the RS5100 and RS6100. And just like the WT63, we have a very robust ecosystem of accessories. You know, I went through all of the different mountings, but when you look at the different types of triggers on that double trigger, we have the standard double trigger, a double trigger that has a USB-C port on it. So if you wanted to just charge one ring scanner and not, you know, an eight slot battery charger, you have that option with the trigger. You have the one that has that haptic feedback with the vibrate. Um, and you also have two different battery options. So if you need the extended capacity, we have extended capacity batteries, and then those two different battery charger options. And what's great is that the two ring scanners um, can leverage all those same existing accessories. You don't have unique accessories for the 61 and unique accessories for the 51. And we even updated the accessories when we introduced the RS61 because um, some of them needed to be modified in order to accommodate the 61, but we made it backwards compatible if you put a 5100 on these new accessories. So um, if you have a mixed environment, you're able to leverage the same accessories across both ring scanners. And now I'd like to move on and talk about our 
fit for purpose one piece wearable solution. So this is the WS50. It's the smallest all-in-one Android enterprise class wearable mobile computer. What I mean by all-in-one Android wearable mobile computer is that on this you know, small two-inch display mobile computer, we've also integrated data capture. So either a scan engine or a um, camera. But it's also a full-blown mobile computer, meaning it has a processor, it has um, the Android OS on it, you have a memory option on here. It's not a um, peripheral. You don't need a host computer, you know, like a smartwatch. It's not like a smartwatch where you need your phone or a host device that's the brains. This has everything all in one. Why did we look at creating an all in one wearable mobile computer? Um, the main reason is because there are task workers um, who maybe aren't enabled with a device today. Um, or if they are going to be enabled with a device, the only option is a full large screen mobile computer plus a ring scanner. And that could really be overkill for some of these task based workflows. Um, so we saw a gap in the wearable offering. Um, when it comes to the two piece solution, it's also kind of complex if you don't, um, again, if you have to now manage a wearable mobile computer plus a separate ring scanner, which means separate accessories, separate batteries, service contracts. It's a lot to manage and is kind of a barrier for enabling more workers with a wearable device. Um, and then worker training, like task workers don't need that full size uh, mobile computer where a simplified user interface would be more suitable. So these have been par barriers typically to connecting task workers. And that's what, you know, um, presented the opportunity to create the WS50. And with that WS50, like I said, you're combining a wearable mobile computer and data capture into one small form factor. So this gives you one device to wear, one device to have to procure and manage, just one battery to manage and one service contract. So really giving you and your workforce simplicity with this all-in-one solution. But while it's a small solution, it's still highly capable. Um, so this device has full Android, AOSP. Um, it doesn't support Google mobile services, but it does have A11, AOSP on it. So it's the same Android that's running on you know, other Zebra devices that might be deployed within the environment. So you're not having to learn a new development language or learn, you know, watch OS on this product. It is full Android. So you're able to leverage all of the benefits that Zebra has put into the Android operating system on an enterprise product. It has uh, a um, Bluetooth connectivity, so you can pair a headset, you could pair a Bluetooth printer. It has an integrated microphone and speaker, so it could be used for um, voice applications like push to talk. Um, so being able to communicate with other task workers or with other users that are using other Zebra mobile computers. Um, and you have full shift battery on here um, with that 13 megahertz, um, uh, milliamp hour battery, I, I mean, on the scan engine version and 800 megapixel battery on the wrist version. And those batteries are removable and hot swappable. So when you pop the battery out to replace it, the device isn't going to reboot. Um, you have a, a minute or two to pop that battery back in and stay connected to, all, to the application and not have any downtime in that battery swap. And what's unique about the solution is that we have these two different offerings. So with the um, Converge Scan, this is that Android wearable mobile computer with the integrated scanner. So think about use cases like um, trailer load use case, where a user is purely um, scanning a box that needs to go on the trailer. They're getting the verification on the WS50 that they scan the right box. They go to the trailer, they scan the barcode to say that they've 
you know, are putting it in that trailer, they get a verification. Yes, this is the right trailer. And they're doing that all day. That's a perfect use case for the converge scan versus having a full large screen wearable computer on the arm that the user isn't interacting with at all, doesn't have to type anything in in the first place. Why not equip them with this small all-in-one converge scan unit, which consists of that WS50 core. It has our 4770 imager in it. Um, it has the capability to do push to talk voice solutions, has the embedded speaker and microphone, um, has a six foot drop as well, and is very comfortable to wear with that finger strap. But you can also put it on the back of your hand, which is what we're seeing in that middle image there. So that same enterprise hand mount that we have on the RS51 and 61, we have here for the WS50 as well. So to making it even more comfortable to leverage the solution. And then on the wrist mount side, this is that same WS50 core, but with an integrated camera. Um, so we see solutions for this uh, wearable um, when we think of task management. Um, think about a user in a retail environment who doesn't need a full-blown handheld because they're not, you know, doing a lot of the, you know, core um, use cases, you know, whether that's, you know, inventory markdowns or assisted selling, you know, they're purely doing task work. Maybe they have to go do something down an aisle or clean up an area, being able to quickly see what their tasks are on the WS50, but then also being able to communicate if they need help, if they need to know what their next task is. Um, they have all that same functionality from the voice perspective with the speaker and microphone. Um, and also have a camera if they do need to do light barcode decode or they need to you know, capture an image of a completed task. So the whole intent here is to have a right-sized wearable computer to enable more users within the operation with the right technology at the right size at the right price. Um, and with that, uh, that gives you a, a high level overview of the different fit for purpose wearable options at Zebra. Amanda, that was great, great information. And, and I did get a couple in already. The first one was about battery life, specifically with the corded ring scanner. Does the corded ring scanner actually decrease the battery life or is it pretty much the same? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It doesn't take up because you're not scanning, you know, so much that it's, um, you know, eating up the battery of the WT63. That has a really large battery as it is. Um, so you're not going to see any degradation when you go from the Bluetooth to the corded. In, in actuality, I think the ring scanner itself might be lasting longer than if you just had Bluetooth, the Bluetooth um, battery. Like meaning if you had the RS5100 alone with the Bluetooth, that battery would need to be recharged. Whereas you're connecting the ring scanner directly to the WT, you might see longer battery life. And part of that question too asks, what is the average battery life of those devices? How long do they last per day? So we rate them for full shift. So that could be anywhere from 10 to 13 hours, depending on which battery, but it's really dependent on the use case. So, you know, in some cases you might see even more longer battery life, depending on the aggressiveness of the use case, but we definitely are testing everything to meet at a minimum, a 10 hour shift. Excellent. And another talked about the configurations, you mentioned the built-in camera and the scanner, I believe, is on the WS50. Is that the only place that the camera is available? And then the second part of that is, is it something that's built in so it has both, or is it interchangeable, or do you have to order them differently? No, great question. So on the WS50, you have two configurations, the Converge Scan, which is an integrated scan engine, and then you have the Wrist, which is an integrated camera. So you can't put a camera in the converge scan unit that can go on your finger or the or the back of hand. And, and on the wrist unit that has the camera, you can't put a scan engine in there. So they are two different models and they're not, you know, modular, if you will. Great, thanks. 
And then somebody was asking about workflows and use cases for the WS50. Where does that make more sense from a uh, business standpoint, whether it's manufacturing or retail or so on and so forth? So on the converge scan, we see that making more sense in like warehouse and distribution um, TNL environments where it's like a high scan intensive use case. But the wrist mount with the integrated camera, we see more like manufacturing plant floor, like line side um, use cases. You know, someone could use it to be communicating, you know, that they need more parts brought to the line and more as a communication tool. And also that wrist version in retail front of store to enable um, task workers who normally wouldn't be enabled with technology because all they really need is communication and, you know, a list of their tasks. This is a nice fit in that use case to enable them with technology so that they can do that communication and have access to the tasks, but at a more economical cost than giving them a touch computer, if you will. Excellent. Last question I have for you is about integration. How do all of these integrate with systems within a warehouse or facility? So all of these can, you know, they can be integrate with a warehouse management system there. You can manage them through an EMM or MDM tool. So it's not, nothing different from, you know, our traditional um, handheld or vehicle computers when it comes to the, to the wearable side. Great. Thank you. And I have one last question, and this is for Bob. Bob, do you have any use cases where, wearable scanners have made a huge difference in a business? Yeah, uh, we actually are seeing a large increase in demos and sales in all facets of wearable. And the reason why is that there is just a need when you have a handheld device and you're moving or picking up or working with items that require two hands to move them, the, the wearable is just a, a real easy jump to get to because instead of having to grab a device, perform a scan, perform a workflow function, then you know either put it down or put it into a holster, it's just so much easier if everything is on your person and you can go ahead and go through your workflows and perform those scans very easily and still be able to move the products. That's where we're seeing it, uh, both inside the four walls and outside the four walls, especially in delivery, when there are workers that are dropping off and picking up uh, large totes or large containers that require two hands to move, it's just becoming more and more prevalent from our perspective. Thanks, Bob. And I can imagine people have some more questions or maybe they want to get a hands-on demo. So, Bob, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Well, as always, Brian, uh, you know, pick up the phone and give us a call at our 800 number. You can also reach out to us via email at our main sales uh, email box. And then obviously I put a link in there for our mobile terminal landing page. And then we have just released a new ebook that really takes a look and does a deep dive on wearables. So I do appreciate your time, everyone. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Imprint and we can schedule a demo and uh, have you test the product in your own environment. Well, thank you everybody for attending. And Amanda, thank you so much for the great presentation. Bob, thanks for hosting. And I hope everybody enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, contact Bob at Imprint. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Imprint Zebra webinar. Amanda and Bob, thanks so much. Thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you, Amanda. You.